Hi, my name is Roger Ahuja, and I'm going to take a couple of minutes and talk to you about port forwarding. So I'm going to use this as an example here. Um, let's say you have a computer out on the internet and you want to access a computer in your office. As far as that computer on the internet is concerned, it's going to be able to talk to your router, which has a public IP address. I'm using 4.2.2.2 as an example here. There's no way right off the bat through the firewall for it to access this computer here on your network. And if this computer out here on the internet was to try to connect to this IP address, which is really the only IP address it has access to, um, it will be stopped at the router here. So how does this connect computer access this computer over here? And that's where port forwarding comes in. There are 65,536 ports on any IP address. I'm going to talk about port 3389 right now, which is for remote desktop. So if you wanted to remote control this computer here, what you would have to do is you would connect to the router, and then you would connect on port 3389. So uh, if you're using the remote desktop connection, you would put a colon 3389 at the end of it. And then this router would be told that, okay, forward that port to this computer. And then this computer, assuming it's configured for remote desktop, when it receives that request on port 3389, it would answer that request and let you remote control it. So what I want to talk about is how do you configure this router to forward that port request over to here. And so I'm going to open up uh, my router real quick here. Most routers have some kind of port forwarding already built into them. And they'll have certain applications that are predefined built in. So for example, FTP, which uses port 21 and the TCP protocol, I could say, if I had an FTP server set up, I could say, send it to um, 105 as an example, which would be the computer that's internally. Now the computer still has to be configured to receive that FTP port, but uh, that's how you would do it. Um, you can also custom define them here. Port 3389, as I mentioned earlier, is already a, um, is a known port for remote control. Well, if I'm a hacker and I just start hitting public IPs and I requested port 3389 to see if something responds, uh, that would be a relatively easy way for me to get in. So you don't necessarily want to use port 3389 um, as a port from the outside. So in this case, you could say, okay, I'm going to create a remote desktop connection. So remote desktop. And maybe you want to pick a random port of 52,000 or 53,000. Um, but internally, and that's the external port, but internally, it's going to forward it to port 3389. And now what you've done is you've, instead of using port 3389, you're using a different port. And then you would just tell it which IP address you wanted to go to. And this is how you would configure your games. Um, if you had a game that needed a specific port to be opened and pointed to a specific computer, it's helpful if you set a static IP on the computer that you're connecting to. Uh, because you don't want to, if that IP address changes, um, then you got to go back in here and change the um, the routing again because it's going to the IP address would change. So if it's set to a static IP, then uh, you just configure it one time, and um, and that's basically it.